Some people. Welcome to the stage, Truman King. If 
files hit the disk, you start running the inference, and it ends up being pretty fast if you opt for the higher quality hardware. So then it's just going to come down to um, uh, cost um, savings perspective. So let's talk about some of the counter uh, surveillance scenarios. If you're parked, you want to know, you know, which cars are people, uh, are, which cars are people are loitering near my house or my car. You're not really going to be able to see any faces while you're driving. The cameras just aren't at that level yet. I'm sure you could if you used third-party dash cams, and this so the software component of this could be modified to work with third-party dash cams, absolutely, but it's just not going to be as, as natural with it. Um, during your drive, things like how long has the car been behind me, or have I seen that car before? And that last one is one that I really want to highlight, is the fact that this device isn't going to take the place of an actual standard surveillance detection route that someone is running. And someone is still going to have to remain highly vigilant if they're in a situation where they're seriously running surveillance detection routes daily. Uh, but the computer isn't going to forget over months, years, decades. Uh, not to say that a car's going to be following you for years. Maybe I'm the only one. I don't know. But the computer's not going to forget. And that's what makes it uh, really helpful uh, to look at it from like a big data perspective. Uh, later on, we'll, we'll look into that uh, in, in the demo. So some recon query scenarios. This basically means so from a physical pen testing or red teaming perspective, you can essentially park the car outside of an office that you're going to run a physical pen test on, leave it there for a day, and later on, get the, and, and you can put a mobile hotspot there if you want to be able to, you know, like a, you know, a Wi-Fi hub some type of MiFi thing to, in real time, remotely access the data that's there. Or you can just pick it up later and run these recon queries to see when the first person arrives in the morning, when the last person leaves at night. You can scrape LinkedIn for the company that you're going to be running a physical pen test on, get these photos, load them into your database, and then run facial recognition against those photos. Uh, so, somewhat scary, but uh, definitely an extremely uh, powerful tool from a physical uh, pen testing perspective as well. So web stack is not super important uh, because you can you can modify this however you want. The, the view is just a JavaScript framework that I prefer, um, and then MongoDB again because I wasn't about to put this on Firebase. Uh, I just am not. I, I just wanted to keep everything local, especially when I was testing this with all my drive data. The computer vision stack I. Ex that this might change a little bit, but I'll give you a little bit of a backstory. I tried to initially just build this out myself. I was like, okay, AI, computer vision, I'm going to train this model. And that. So I just started labeling it just left and right. And I probably spent close to 20 hours just going through gigs of um, video footage and just cutting out frames, dragging them the box of the license plates I grew up in, some of the interns, which I appreciate you guys didn't end up using it. I will. The off-the-shelf frameworks. Right, so there's a AL, uh, there's a GitHub repo um, with the name ALPR dash unconstrained. That's the one where I looked through a few and just right out right out of the box was able to classify uh, correctly half of the license plate images that I gave to it. So that was huge. And you can you can uh, modify or fine tune this setup with those labeled images, so I will be making use of any manually labeled uh, uh, you know, training uh, images. But the short story, the short version is that I'm not some expert in AI. I took off-the-shelf tools that are freely available online, and it's just knowing, you know, Nest or Ring cameras have facial recognition. There's facial, facial recognition software and open source software out there becoming a lot easier to use, and uh, I know that there's license plate recognition open source software out there as well, and just putting the two, two and two together. I'm going to drink of water. So, I, I'm using um, YOLO V3, which is based off of Darknet, to run the um, license plate uh, detection, and then I'm using FaceNet for the facial recognition uh, features. With the devices that I'm going to get to next, uh, I'm making use of Tensor RT, which is a way to use TensorFlow on these embedded devices so that they run super fast. And again,
again, this potentially will change. I'm just going to be fine tuning testing if you submit a pull request and it's just better than what you would have in mind. Here are the hardware options. Now, this, um, one of the things that originally inspired this was a GitHub repo that was uh, that's a Tesla USB. Basically, uh, like a guy took a Pi Zero W and, and, and modified it or scripted it so that the Tesla would treat it as a flash drive. And so, when you pulled into your garage at home connected to Wi-Fi, you were able to move that video over extremely slowly. So very happy to get off the Pi Zero W. Uh, with the Pi uh, 4 coming out, you could potentially run inference on this, but really the top two options are going to be for if you just want to be able to capture all of the video. Uh, by default, Tesla is only going to be able to, uh, is only going to give you saved events where either you manually saved an event by clicking the button on the screen, or uh, when a sentry mode event uh, was detected, basically when the enhanced car alarm would go off, that's when you get an event. Quite a few false positives in there as well. Uh, but you would use either of these two top options if you wanted to save all of that video. So the, 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 the bottom two options are the Just Nano, which is it's only $100, it's extremely affordable. That's this one here. And the uh, Jetson Xavier, which is this one here, are going to be the ones that you're going to want to run. Uh, use if you're running inference, if you want to be notified in real time. But the other two, you're just going to upload that uh, video or data to your computer and run inference on it later. So really, for all my testing, I use the Jetson Xavier. Uh, as far as uh, benchmarks, the Xavier is going to be almost double as fast. Now, it's definitely more than double the price, but $700 I think is still affordable, especially if I just think it's I just think it's worth it. Uh, but the, you're going to get things. It's not it's not really going to be uh, real time if you go with the Jetson Nano. So if you want real time, you you need to go with the Xavier. And again, I expect these uh, uh, FPS benchmarks to uh, change as well. All right, let's get to the demo. Okay, so here is basically the recently detected dashboard. This would you what you what you see first and. As you can see, a lot of plates are detected. This is a very small sample, but a lot of plates are detected in a very short amount of time. And you can search by car maker model, which is pretty cool. Uh, but this isn't really going to be able to help tell you if you're being followed. You can't really make use of the data in this way. So we can click on all detected plates. Those were fake license plates, by the way. Click on all detected plates, and now we can start to make better use of this data. We can really study the data here. Um, at the top, you'll see this link to friend. Basically, we are able to tag something as a benign finding. Uh, if we notice, like maybe when we're looking at the video later, we notice like it's, it's a coworker, neighbor, friend, something like that. Now, why is this high risk with only four uh, detections down here? Well, uh, if you want to see a, um, a video of the real-time live in-car uh, notification, there's a Wired article and, and or just YouTube video that I'll post that will uh, have a link to that video. So basically, you're able to set your settings on notification. You're able to set your thresholds. Do I want to be notified when a car is detected X number of times in X number of minutes? Do I want to be notified when the, the same vehicle is detected over a certain number of days, uh, maybe within a geographical area, and then outside of that geographical area? That's what you, what you can do from a threshold perspective. And that's why this high risk uh, rating is here when there are only uh, four detections. Because I had set something up to where if a car is seen, the same car is seen over four uh, over four days, like you know, if it's seen every day for four days, let me know, essentially, and, and it was. So we can click into this Range Rover to figure out what the deal is. We, we know that an alert was triggered. We want to know why. We can turn on satellite mode. But basically here we see in the search bar that we search this license plate, the place markers are going to show the photos of the actual uh, detection that took place. We can click into one and we can see at the time that this detection took place, the speed that we were going, the power usage of the car, what gear we were in. And we can click into uh, play video if we want to uh, be brought back in time to when this detection occurred. So the bottom left we see the car driving by. That's the front camera there in the middle. And we can fast forward a few seconds here. 
and now we can see in real time how fast we we're going along with this video and along with um, you know, the place marker map data. So we were able to put all this data together in a really cool way. Um, it just makes it useful um, to, to examine. Now let's see what's next here. So we're going to get into the um, face detection. Essentially, we know that this is a male late 20s. It's the same male. Uh, we're able to click or unclick if we're, we're able to train the model basically. You see a video of the detection. This is very similar to like a nest camera or a ring camera. The name of this person, save it, and now we can search uh, for this person's name, and we see that treatment has been detected. Just looping around my car. And that is essentially it for the demo. this video or learned something and comment below what you found interesting.